Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is heat sinks and cooling. Basically, from the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What is a heat sink? Draw its equivalent circuit and write down the design considerations. We know that in case of power devices, if you are not using heat sink, then heating of the power devices takes place. So heat sink is used so that the developed heat across the power devices will be radiated easily and it will be the heat is dissipated to the ambient or to the air. The power devices are mounted on the device which is called heat sink. It is a large metal piece of different shapes. Actually, there is no electrical connection between the actual power device and the heat sink, but the heat sink and power devices are connected in such a way that the heat gets re easily radiated out. So for the dissipation of heat, basically heat sinks are used. Now this is the equivalent circuit of the heat sink. Here the term theta indicates the thermal temperature. Different points are shown in this diagram. This is the junction point. This is the case point. This is the sink point. This is ambient or air. So Tj indicates junction temperature, Tc case temperature, Ts sink temperature and Ta is the ambient or air temperature. As I said, theta represents the thermal resistance. It is equivalent or very much equivalent to the electrical resistance. So the re thermal resistance between junction and case is theta Jc. Between case and sink is theta Cs. Between sink and air or ambient is theta Sa. Similarly, the resistance, thermal resistance between case and ambient is theta Ca. The actual thermal resistance, total thermal resistance, I mean to say from junction to ambient will be addition of all. So theta Ja, that is thermal resistance from junction to ambient from this point to this point is theta Jc plus theta Cs plus theta Sa, addition of all. Now, similar to the electrical equivalent, we can write the equation of PD, power dissipation, as Tj minus Ta, that is this temperature, Tj minus Ta, divided by the total thermal resistance between uh, junction and ambient, that is theta Ja. Now, what are the design considerations? We have discussed that this is the uh, equation of total thermal resistance from junction to ambient and this is the equation of PD. So in this case, theta Cs, the value of this thermal resistance, which is the thermal resistance between case and sink, it depends on the type of material used for designing of heat sink. Generally, aluminium is preferred because aluminium is having the higher conductivity so radiation of heat takes place much faster compared to the other materials then theta sa that is thermal resistance between sink and uh, air so it depends this value of theta sa depends on the material and area of the heat sink so this area of the heat sink must be large enough so that the heat can be easily radiated out then mounting of a heat sink is heat sink is done vertically so that uh, there will be easy uh, bypass of the heat. Then fourth point, fourth consideration, fourth design consideration is size of heat sink is reduced by using cooling, uh, cooling techniques. We are going to study it. There are different cooling techniques. So if you again use cooling techniques, then the size of a heat sink can be reduced. So this is about the heat sink, its equivalent circuit and design considerations. Next part is cooling methods. There are different cooling methods used. If we apply a particular cooling method, then the size of the heat sink gets reduced. That is the major advantage. So different cooling methods are first is natural convention. As the name indicates, naturally heat should be transmitted, radiated to the environment, to the ambient. So certain treatment is applied to the heat sink surfaces so that there will be natural convention. That means for example, aluminum fins are painted or anodized. Means certain painting is applied or anodization is applied to the, if you are using aluminum material in case of heat sink, so that naturally the heat will be radiated to the ambient. 
it is used when there is not much heat dissipated that means if there is a less amount of heat developed in that particular power device then only this natural method is applicable next is forced air cooling as the name, name indicates we are going to apply certain blowers certain fans so that uh, by force we are going to apply air and cooling takes place so fans or compressors are used to take out the heat it increases volume of the airflow because we are using fans or uh, this thing uh, compressor so volume of the airflow increases over the heat sink in a given time and it helps to reduce the size of a heat sink then next is third is forced liquid cooling here water is the uh, best material used to provide the cooling certain holes are produced in case of a heat sink material uh, and uh, the holes are arranged in such a way that the water is circulated in the u-shaped form so water is used to remove the generated heat the holes are made in the heat sink to form u-shaped water passage then for long term operation uh, if you are if you want to perform this cooling for a long term operation then deionized water is used that means we are supposed to use the distilled water next fourth is vapor phase cooling it is used in case of a high power devices in this case whatever heat is developed across the device that heat evaporates the liquid then the this vapor when whatever vapor is generated due to evaporation this vapor flows to the condenser it gets cooled down then condenser again converts the vapor into the liquid and then that liquid which is the cool temperature is uh, lower then that liquid is then sent back to the device so these are the different cooling methods in case of used in uh, power devices now let us solve the numericals related to designing of heat sink Consider a numerical for a given uh, for a thyristor maximum junction temperature is 110 degree centigrade. So this is Tz max maximum junction temperature which is 110 degree centigrade. The thermal resistances are theta Jc. I have drawn the equivalent uh, diagram. Uh, this is junction next is case and this is the sink. So this value at the junction is represented by the notation tj junction that is maximum junction temperature this is t sink that is temperature of the sink this is the case terminal and the power dissipation rather the maximum power dissipation between t uh, between junction and sink is denoted by pd max now what is asked in the question for a heat sink temperature at 60 degree this is the given temperature of a heat sink calculate total average power loss in, in the thyristor sink combination that means we have to calculate the power loss means indirectly we have to calculate value of pd max uh, if heat sink temperature is reduced to 50 degree means pile 60 degree clay calculation karna hai. if it is reduced to 50 degree find new average power loss I have written the given values tj max is 110 degree theta jc this value is uh, 0.16 theta is the thermal resistor between junction and case that means this resistance then theta cs between case and sink i am talking about this resistance so this value theta cs is 0.08 t sink is 60 degree these are the given values we just have to make use of only one formula pd maximum is tj max minus t sink upon theta js plus theta cs let us put the values so tj max is 110 degree minus t sink 60 degree upon theta jc that is 0 0.16 plus theta cs that is 0 0.08 if you solve this then this answer is 208.33 watts second calculation is again pretty simple instead of 60 degree you need to now consider the temperature of 50 degree all the things are same so now you will be considering this as 50 degree and this answer will be 250 watt so the designing uh, numericals related to designing of heat sink are pretty simple so this is the way how to solve the numericals related to this part so dear students that's it for for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video